Well, when we think energy metals, cobalt, lithium obviously come to mind, but what about graphite? I'm about to get my education today. Thank you to my next guest, Ugo Landry Tolsta. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having okay. me. Okay, you are about to educate me on graphite because I've been covering cobalt, I've been covering lithium, but we don't really talk about graphite when it comes to the energy space here. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, and I think graphite in a little bit has been the forgotten metal. Uh, and I think we're what we've seen in the lithium space and the cobalt space, I think we have yet to see in the graphite space, and I think we're going to see it. What people don't know is that in a lithium-ion battery, the number one component by weight is graphite. The entire anode, doesn't matter the cathode chemistry, the entire anode is made of graphite. Graphite is used to hold the charge of lithium ions. So lithium ions intercalate into the graphite and that's what holds your charge. So if you want a longer lasting battery, innovation in the graphite space and in the anode side is what's most important. Do you know how much would, is needed in electrical cars? Yeah. So if we, take, uh, if we take on a kilowatt hour basis, for example, you need about 1.1 to 1 kilogram per kilowatt hour of graphite uh, 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 per kilowatt hour. So in a car that's 60 kilowatt hours, for example, you need between 60 and 66 kilograms of graphite. So, and how can one invest in, in graphite? So it's sold by, by the ton, right? But it's not like gold that I could yeah. buy the actual physical graphite. That's a very good question. So the graphite market is actually quite large. The entire graphite market is 2.1 million tons. So about the size of the nickel market. Of that, about a million to a million, uh, 1.1 million tons is the uh, is synthetic graphite made from uh, needle coke and pitch, uh, and that goes mostly into the electric arc furnace market, and then the remainder is, is natural graphite, and of that, uh, that's sold on contracts, so an off-take contract similar to lithium or to how met coal used to be uh, with specific users because each user wants a specific type of graphite for their specific use. So graphite is sold on off-take agreements uh, by the ton uh, on off-take agreements that last between one and five years. Now you're operating in West Africa, you're not in production yeah, correct. No, correct. I know your chairman, uh, Benoit Lasalle, has a lot of experience uh, yeah. in, in the region. I'm sure that's a benefit because obviously when you think West Africa, safety comes to mind. Yeah. And, uh, and that's another good question. So we, as a group, I worked for Semifo since uh, 2010. Obviously, Benoit founded Semifo. Uh, we took a few guys from, from that and decided to do a new venture into energy metals. Uh, so this will be our second mine we build in Guinea. The first one was, was with Semifo uh, back in 06. Uh, and today, Guinea is a very large mining country. Uh, it has 25% of the world's reserves in bauxite. Uh, and so, for example, the American embassy is larger in Guinea than it is in Canada. It is a very, very strategic country. It has very large iron ore projects. Rusal is there, Rio Tinto, Chinalco. And so Guinea today, over 15% of their GDP comes from mining. So high, high mining jurisdiction. Uh, they, they, it's a country that really wants, really wants mining. Ugo, I want to get your perspective now on the mining industry as a whole. You know, yeah. If I look across the board, obviously miners have really been hit hard yeah. here, regardless of what space you're mining yeah. in. So do you think that the market is fairly valuing the stocks here? I think today there has been a significant underinvestment into my, in the mine space as, as a whole. If we go back to 2008 or 2009, about $130 billion a year were spent in the mining space. Until 2013, that dropped to about 80 billion, and today we're about at 40 billion dollars. So not just in graphite, but uh, in nickel and base metals and copper, uh, in projects that take a very long time to develop, there has been a significant underinvestment, and we're seeing today stockpiles go down, and and we're seeing there's got to be a run up if we want new right. mining to be done. And, and I get I get the issue on the gold and silver, silver price. front because you, yeah. you really need a rally to drive momentum yeah. here. But if you look at base metals, we've seen, you know, in the energy space, we've seen crazy fluctuations in yeah. price. So you would think that this would have brought renewed industry uh, in energy yeah. and interest into the space. Yeah, so we've seen a little bit of that last year. Until about mid last year, we saw quite a run up in lithium, for example, and, and, and cobalt. Right. And then there's been some, the Morgan Stanley report was hit the market pretty hard. Not so much in graphite, but in the other metals, they brought the metal price down. In graphite, the metal price is actually, or the material price is actually continue to go up. Uh, even today, it's much higher than it was last year, which is much higher than it was the year before. Uh, and so we're more of a market-driven market driven commodity. But in general, I think today, nickel pricing below $12,000 a ton is far from the incentive price that's required. So we're going to see more and more, uh, more and more, I think, uh, as demand goes up, 
uh, we're going to have to see more and more with the price go up. If not, there's going to be no more mines. And without mines, there's not going to be the EV revolution. Over cobalt, there's the dark cloud of how and whether it's ethically mined um, coming out of Africa. Those, those same issues play graphite? Yeah, it plays in the entire space. So we're seeing more and more in the energy metal space. Um, the end user, which are vehicle manufacturers or, or, or uh, power companies, for them sustainability and traceability is very, very important. And that just wasn't the case before. So right now, China controls about 80% of the cobalt market. Six, over 65% of it is mined in the DRC. And so traceability is more of an issue. Uh, whereas in Guinea, that's traceability and so sustainability are not an issue, but that's becoming very, very important. And also your CO2 intensity per ton mined or per kilowatt hour produce is becoming more important as well. So having a green, sustainable mine is becoming more and more important. When can we expect uh, new news from SRG? Listen, we, we're hard at work. We released our PEA in, back in July. We told the market that we'd come out uh, early Q2 with our feasibility study. We're still planning on having that. Uh, and our nickel cobalt deposit, we're working hard on that. So it should be some news before the end of the year. All right. Well, please give my regards to Benoit. I think he was one of the first mining CEOs I ever interviewed back in the day. He'll be happy to hear that. Years ago. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank and uh, thanks for watching. We'll have more for you on Kiko.com.